Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with a kind of a follow-up video. Now, either my last video or the video before was like a charity shop, thrift shop, um, haul share with you, and in that share, I did share that I found a pack of mixed labels, and I said to you, if you wanted, I'd show you what I was going to do with them. Lots of you wanted to see what I did with them, so this is what we're going to do with them. Um, now, because for me, this is a two-day stage to create the labels I want, I'm going to do one of each of the techniques on these, and I have already done all of the label backs already, and they were dried yesterday, so it means I can stamp on them and finish them off, so at least some of them with you here, so, so hopefully that'll be okay with you. Right, I need to put down some sort of a messy mat, really. Let's get something to get. I don't really want to get my mat terribly, terribly dirty. Um, someone has asked me about this, um, this covering. Now, I bought this on the internet, and I, I don't know that it is a wipeable, heat proof mat or something. Um, when I ordered it I didn't realise I ordered it from a company that wasn't Ranger which is where I was trying to order it from. When it arrived it was folded and damaged so I cut it in half and this is half of it. You can buy the whole roll from Ranger. Um, I can't remember exactly what the name of it is so just look for a, a, a heat resistant mat or something like that. I'll try and find it again like the real one and put it into the description box but don't hold me that I can't remember where I bought it from because it's been a while ago. Also I'm going to link in the description box the original video where I shared the goodies I found just in case you didn't see them. So that's another thing in there. Now as most of you know I do like labels. I use labels a lot so this is this is my current box of labels. So as you can see I get all of these are from like sales bins, these original Avery labels or whatever labels I'm using. I use them to clear off my brayer on and then I stamp on them and stencil on them. I clean stuff off on them and I use them. I use them on the backs of my happy mail to people. I use them as accent pieces in my collage. As you can see, there's a lot of them, so I do use them, even, even the abstract type ones. I, I just find them fun. I mean, Let's just pull that one off. So there you go. So now that actually is a good thing to say too. If you're going to use wet techniques, and there's another one, onto sticky labels, sometimes they lose their complete stickiness. Whether it's sticky or not, I always use a glue stick to stick a label down anyway. But as you can see, if that was on the back of a piece of Happy Mail or on the corner of a business card or something, they're great. I love them. So anyway, we're going to be doing sort of similar things, but not 100%. So let's start the ball rolling. Um, let's show you the sort of things we're looking at. So these ones, there's three different techniques I use. And these, this is how I kind of just age them. Now, I'm not showing you anything new here, guys. Um, if I haven't shared it in a previous video, I can guarantee someone else has done it in a video as well. It's not new. It's just maybe it's new to some of you. Um, and that's good. So, new to some of you is worth doing the video for. Um, and if I didn't do the video, you'd only ask me why I didn't do the video. So, so that's the second technique. And then this is the third technique. Now, this third technique is a bit, um, a bit of a technique that I've done in another... What did I do them for? I think I did them for index cards. So I will actually link that video as well in the description box. So you get my idea. You'll see more of them when it comes around to finishing them off. So let's just get on with it. So first one's first. Let's, let's do... Let's do that one. Okay. All I'm using is I'm using Ranger Distress Ink. I think it works with oxides. Um, I've got a really old stamping block and I've got a new stamping block. Both the same thing. What I would say though is if you've got a fresh new one, um, be a little more light handed with your blending tool or you're going to end up with almost black. But as this, this is almost dying this pad, um, I'm just putting it on and I'm doing a circular motion. I try to hold it down as best I can so that the labels don't lift off um, because the foam can catch under the edges. Um, if there's a little crease in it, I'm not going to worry because you know what? When I glue it down, there ain't going to be a creaser anymore. That's really bad English, isn't it? Ain't. 
They don't normally say that, so there you go. So, so this is what I would use my old ink pad for, because as you can see, I get a really subtle, subtle brownness. And this is the same way, you know those white re hole reinforcers, the little rings you buy? This is also how I turn my white reinforce hole reinforcers into the coffee colour paper colour, which is this. Now, just as an example, I'm now going to take the fresher ink pad and do half of this and you'll see immediately what happens. So this is what I'm saying is depends on how fresh your ink pad is as to how how much difference you're going to get. Now I'm going to leave these both as is because there may be projects I want lighter, there may be projects I want darker and that is how I did all of these. Okay, all the different shapes all the way through. You can do it with any colour ink you wish. I mean, I'm using a Distress ink. Um, there's no reason it is a Distress ink. It's just the inks I've got are Distress inks. I'm sure if you can pick an ink up on a blender and rub it onto a label, there you go, you've done it. Right, let's see. Let's do these ones next. Now, these ones are done with... Actually, let's do, let's do two of these. Let's put that one to one side because then it won't be so long. Right, this time I'm just going to come in, I'm going to take a wet wipe or baby wipe. Now, as you know, I don't normally use baby wipes unless there's no other product that will do the job as well. And in this case, I use wet wipes because in my opinion, they're exactly what this one needs. What I will say though is once I finish the project, um, I do save my wet wipes and I've got a little bag of them dried out, which I'm going to use in the future, maybe to make a cover or something. I haven't quite, haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do with that. Um, I also have a little atomizer of water and just acrylic paint. So I'm, it can be any acrylic paints you want. I would say go for probably the more fluid colours than um, the more heavy bodied. So I'll put a little bit of dot of a paint down. Give it a couple of squirts so it gets even thinner in its consistency. Dab my wet wipe around on it and I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to put patches on here until I've used up my little patch of paint or majority of it. Don't care, it's done. Then I'm going to go on to another colour. Now I'm going to use the same colours I used to do these ones because it would be unfair for me to show you a different colour combination. So I'm going to come in, I've now got some Brick Red by Stamperia. Again, only need a little bit of each colour. A little bit of this goes a very long way, guys. Now, um, why did I do them yesterday to do them today? The reason for that is because we're using wet mediums onto these labels and they're not meant to be used for wet mediums. Um, they're going to curl. As they dry, they're going to really, really curl up and roll up. And what I usually do is I wait for them to be fully dried and then I put a heavy weight on, I stack them up, put a weight on top and it flattens them out. I usually leave them overnight to do that. Um, let's use a bit of this DYNA from Pebio and it's an iridescent. So it's got a bit of a shine to it. Now, because this is a really soft body, I'm not going to add water to this. And also my wet wipe is quite wet anyway. I'm just going to put a few patches in. Just, you don't need to do the whole thing. You just need areas. I mean, this is something really quick you can do. It's a great way also to use up paint. So if you're doing, say, gel printing and you've got, you've got some some of these labels to hand just go ahead and use them guys use them as clean up as well because that's how I make my bigger labels and then one last color I'm going to bring in turquoise again a little tiny bit of a dot don't know why I like turquoise in this color combination but I do now that again is quite a soft bodied color so I'm just going to come in and I'm hardly touching the page um, the stamps I'm literally just letting it flick over the top now, at this point, you're going to go, oh, my God, what do those look like? They look fine because you've got to remember that once you've got them all finished up, oh, I'm going blue on that. Let's put some blue on there. And once you've got them finished up, when you peel them off, they're going to be individual pieces of art. OK, they don't always look good when they're in mass, but when you peel them off, they will. Right. So these two are going to go to one side. 
and this is what they look like when they're dried and being pressed under a book or something to um, make sure they're flattened out again. There you go, that's those. We've been working with those shortly. So I just need to have a bit of a clean up over here. Let me just get a bit of paper, kitchen towel, whatever you want to call it. Now the next one is, um, some people call it a smooshing technique or smushing technique. And again, I'm using Distress Oxide inks. You can use other inks. I would say probably look for a water-based ink to do this with. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to take my yellow, put a bit of it down. I've only got one sheet of labels to do, so I don't need a lot. A little bit of a spritz of water. Come in, pick it up. That's the first layer. Um, let's put in a bit of this. This is mahogany. Aged mahogany, one of my favourites. So you can imagine that you can do this quite quickly if you've got a whole batch of these labels like I did. I found, I, don't, I didn't count them in the end, but there was a lot of labels in that little bag. And I just literally just started the process off. I'm going to go with peeled paint as my last colour. Um, no choice of colour. On purpose, I just picked these three as the top three colours that were in my box of inks to pick up. So probably from a previous project I'd done, in fact, I think it probably was from the last time I videoed this technique. And again, as I said, I will try and put this one in the description box. But as you can see, ends up like that. But remember, the inks dry paler, so even I use the same colours, that's probably how they're going to dry out. Okay, which is fine because I'm going to stamp over the top of these, probably in black. Okay, so let's put that to one side. So I need a little bit of a two minute clean up here, just to get the decks cleaned. And then we'll move on to the next bit. Now, I will a lot of the time just do the backgrounds and then not take them any further until I know which project I'm working on, or as I said, if I'm working on another project um, and I've got spare inks, I will use them to clean my ink pads off with. I'll use them to do lots of cleanup is what I'm trying to say. So let's go back to our very first ones. Now, a lot of the time um, I will stamp words onto these and this is probably what I'm going to do with these. So I'm going to try and pull out one of each of these. There's four different sorts here. Right, let's leave those to later. I can do those another day. As I said, I don't want to keep us here forever just for the simple techniques. So I'm going to come in now. Where's my stamps? I would say pull out a text stamp. So any text stamp you've got, large or small, doesn't have to be a Tim Holtz, any stamp you choose that's got text on it. So I think I'm going to use this one. Yeah, one of those, maybe, maybe just the top one actually. And I'm just going to pull, pull it out. I'm going to get my block and stick it onto my block. Now, it's up to you how you want the backgrounds to look. If I'm planning to put something in the foreground of the stamp, like a word or a number, I will do the backgrounds paler. So my color of choice is normally, this is Shadow Grey by Archival. Um, I like this color because when it goes on, it's subtle in the background. I'll pick it up for you in a moment so you can see them all anyway. And remember guys that literally you're not seeing the whole of the page. You'll only see one stamp at a time, or one label at a time. So don't worry if you miss some. Don't worry if there's only partials on some things. Don't worry if they go in different directions. Each of the labels is going to have a different look. Now, I would say if I'm doing these ones, because it's a linear or a long, thin design, I would probably make sure that my text runs along the line of the label. Um, don't know why, that's just, for me, that's something I like to do. And then with the ones that, the little ones here, it doesn't really matter which direction they go in, or even if everything has got something on it. 
Right, oh, I didn't have a clean off thing. One second. Just needed a little something to clean my stamp off on. I always stamp off my stamps after I've used them, purely because I always stamp off my stamps when I use them. So, as you can see now, there's a really subtle something in the background of each of these. That means every time I pull one of these off the backing paper, it's going to have a little bit of interest in the background, but that little bit of interest is not going to dominate the whole thing. Um, sometimes I will use a colour called Coffee um, by Ranger, which is another sort of version of a grey. It's sort of a palish brown. Um, if you're used to using sepia, you'll know sepia is quite a reddish dominant colour, whereas this this coffee colour isn't so much. So actually I wonder whether I can just do a little bit on one of these. Um, let's do these because some of these don't. Actually, why don't I just grab another one, Griffiths? So let me just ink this pad up. So this would be the coffee colour. Just so you can see the difference in it. Not the straightest stamping in the world, but as you can see, it's not as dominant as black, but it's more dominant than the grey. So it depends on what you're putting in the foreground of your stamp as to what you want in the background, because you don't want the background and the foreground to be in battle with each other, do you? Right, let's put the texting by. Now, once I've done this, that's pretty much the backgrounds of the stamps got done. And I would then go into looking at things like, um, I could put things that have got features in them. So, say this set of stamps here. Um, I pulled out some of my flower stamps, leaf stamps from my stash just to see what I had. I would always say, look for the smaller type stamps. And please don't ask me where I got these from. I tend to pick these up in things like, um, on auction sites and stuff like that so I can't always say where they've come from and as you can see they they very much end up coming in an envelope as they're usually pre-loved and I have no idea who they're from in the first place so I'm just going to pick up this now for this one I'm going to use black um, just because I like I like the drama of it so just going to come in uh, do it on both of those. Okay, didn't have a lot of black ink on there. That's not a problem. I quite like that because it's giving me that almost ghosted effect. So see, I've just got that in the background now. That's enough for me. Don't think I want it on the other ones. So let's change over to another stamp. Um... Let's see what's likely to fit in there. That kind of fits in there. Will this stick? Yes. Oops. Dropped off. Some of my stamps are sold. They've got no sticky and even washing them doesn't, doesn't give me the sticky back, guys. It literally, it's gone. Let's flip this over without it falling off again. So again, as you can see, I've now got interesting backgrounds to put things like words on. So do I will put it on anything else? Maybe this. This is a good example of how to use this as well. Remember, these are all going to be individual stamps, so, um, individual labels. So if you've got a stamp that got lots of detail on it, if you stretch it across three of them, if you look that one, and that one and that one, they're all different, but they're all equally as interesting. Let's take that one out of there. Let's see what else have we got over here. Right, um, I have this. Does it say who it's from? Oh, can I read that? PST is all it's got. Copyright PST. The rest, I have no idea what it says. Um, love this little stamp because it works perfectly on things like um, this sort of stuff. So if I just come in again with my black, add it onto here. As you can see, it just gives a little bit of interest on here. So if I was to come in now and put on um, 
what I'm trying to say, a word on there that would be equally interesting. Um, same techniques work on all of these guys, don't forget. So I'm just literally using the ones that are in front of me. So as you can see, I'll start, I would then put a word next to that. Let's clean that stamp off. So what else have we got here? Now I've got bigger stamps like this. This is quite a large one. I would use the larger ones on things like this, purely because I'm likely to get a flower on the bottom and on the top. Where's my ink block gone again? Okay, this is also an old stamp that's kind of no more sticky on this one. Um, yeah, let's go this way. And I will come in here and I will add it onto the top as well. So as you can see, this has got a border down the side and the way it went over there covers it up beautifully. I can always come in and add little elements like an extra flower there, should I wish. Um, something like this, I would probably add nothing else to. But if I had something that's a bit more open, um, let's use this one. Okay, this is a lot more open than the other ones. This type of stamp, I can come in, add a couple of it on there, and then what's gonna happen is it means that I then do have room for, it could be if you've got a fairy stamp or something like that, you could, you could add something like that into the corner. I'm gonna be doing words on mine later. So what have I done? Done that one, that one, that one, that one. Let's stick a few of these on here. Now, if something has a stem on it, I try to avoid using the stem if it's a smaller, st more, smaller label. So as you can see, I will come in and I will try and stamp across a couple of labels so there's little bits of interest on them, but they're not showing the stem because the stem would then run from one to the other, which kind of doesn't really work with the way my brain is wired, to be honest. Right, where are we up to? So we've got some of the, need something in the middle of there. That's quite small. What is that? I don't know, that's Heather or something like that. Now I'm stamping in black. You can stamp in whatever color you choose. Let's see if I'll pop that in there. So again, oh, that's quite good. See, I've got drum on each of these now, particularly like that little bit there. Just remember that exists and pop that on there. Doesn't matter which orientation I'm in either, guys, because each of these gets peeled off. There you go, so that's some on there. Don't want that on any of the others. Probably not. Right, what have I done? I've done that version, I've done that version. Let's pull in some of these. Um, let's use those two. Right, so I've got a really long linear stamp here. I think these are cornflowers or pinks. Um, not 100% certain. And I use my longer flowers. I tend to stamp down the gap between the two of them. Now it was a bit subtle. I needed more ink on my pad, but still I've got an image in there. So it's just another piece for the background. That's another thing to remember. Maybe I should have said that before. Is things that are done with acrylic, because acrylic is basically a plastic, you're going to get less absorbance from the um, stamped images. But see, I like that. That's in the background. It's subtle. Let's put that one to one side. Let's pull in this one. So you get the idea, guys. Feel free to fast forward if at this point you're going, Kerry, get on with it. It's This is just the process. This is, this is what I said I'd share with you, and it's exactly what I do. I'm just mass making. I don't mind if a couple of them look exactly the same, because they're not going to be on the same piece of paper. They're not going to be in the same journal. They're not going to be anything like that. So they're just going to end up as labels that I use for other things. So don't be afraid to really like, I'm, I'm doing this whole sheet with the same technique because I'm only going to be using one on a tag or something. And I'm only going to be using one on a piece of mail. I can easily take those off there and just use, uh, okay, let's peel that one off. So there you go. That's a little label all on itself. 
yeah, it's an element. It's not, it's maybe not a focal point, but it's an element. And that's only if we're using them as, um, as backgrounds. When we come to put words on things, they will change character one more time. Right, this is a stamp I really like. It's got really quite solid, blocky um, leaves to it. So let's pull in one of these. I like this because it gives me quite a dramatic effect. Let's go across the join. If I turn this around, I can come in from the other side. So as you can see, everyone has got something different on it. Like that's just got a tiny bit, but if I put a word or a number in there, it's fabulous. Right, I think we've done enough of the stamping with background stuff. I just need to sort out which ones I've stamped now because I've kind of lost track. Hopefully I've done a few of each. So it doesn't take long. I mean, how far into this video am I? Probably about 20 minutes into the video. And besides the demonstration, I've already got these bits done. Now, I like to use word stamps. Um, I like to put numbers. I like to put words. So I will go through my stash of labels and pull out anything that's got um, a sentiment on it. I particularly like the little postal ones for the round ones. You can put little butterflies on these if you wish. Anything along those lines, completely up to you. Um, I recently purchased this stamp from um, Tim Holtz because I needed it for another journal, but all of these, and I must not take it out, take it out of there. Um, as you can see, all of these, a lot of these will actually fit onto these labels. So again, I mass make with this. So we'll be using that in a moment. So right, let's pull out these. Right, again, don't know where I pulled, got these from, but these are just like postage stamps, you know, uh, franking stamps, maybe I think they're called for some of us, where basically they will stamp, stamp postmarks. So I use those on these. Are there any more of those in there? There's the little ones gone. Sorry guys, having a bit of a moment. There you go. I knew I had some more somewhere. So what I would do is I would get this on the go, get the little stamp wherever I put that little stamp. There it is. A little bit of an ink block. Hopefully I'm in shot for all of this. Get that out of the way, there's far too many of those. And literally I will go along and just pop them in the middle. I don't care whether they're centralized. They are just a decorative element. And then this will be a finished article. Now I could go in after this and you know, sometimes you have the wavy lines that go across the front. I could do some of those as well. But you can see how quickly, I mean, this whole sheet in my box of labels will just boost up whatever I'm going to be using. As I said, fast forward, guys, you control the buttons. I don't need to do that for you. So there you go. I have a whole sheet of little labels ready to go. And believe me, they didn't cost me much, as you know. I think it was... It was a pound for all of the labels you're seeing me use. That That's pretty good going as far as I'm concerned. And the reason I don't really care, say I've missed this one there, it doesn't matter, that's a fraction of a fraction of a penny. my finger underneath so that's that little stamp done and then as I said if you want to put the franking numbers of um, the little wavy numbers across the little waves like this easily done just pick up the same same block just tap it across I would say don't do all of these just come across and stamp a few of them because maybe it's not something you want on everything that so that just goes to show that's what I would normally do for those little ones 
they're just elements. I mean, I did pull some out. I already had some already made, and they're exactly the same. Different little stamps, maybe, but those are really cute. They look great as you use them up for um, doing postage stuff. Right, let's have a little look. Right, do I want to do words or not? Let's do some numbers next. Okay, numbers. I'm going to pull out my numbers, and I'm going to check to see whether they, first of all, fit on my on my sticker. I know you're going to go, well, surely it'll fit. You don't know. You really don't know. So, actually, we're in luck. That really does fit there. So, I'm going to come in. Now, I'm not going to stamp all of them. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the ones that don't have a lot of leaf on them. Because the others may be more suitable for things like a, a butterfly or a nice little word. Oh, there you go, just stamping those on there. That one, that one in the middle needs something, doesn't it? Just finishes those off. Again, with these, I don't mind. There's something in the background. That's good. So, as you can see, guys, just popping them on there. Let's see. Um, let's use this one. Right, so if I come in here and I just put 178 at the end of maybe those two, it gives me options. What else did we do? Okay, the brown ones, right. I've got a sheet of flowers, but because the positioning of um, the flowers are putting on there, I have spaces. So I will then come in, as I've got that stamp on the go, I will just stamp the daylight out of that. Where have I lost them? I've lost them. There you go. So, or just come on right down and just stamp a whole load of them. These are just things you end up using as layers as you construct stuff. So that's cleaned up that one. So my desk is looking really messy now. And as you know, that's not how I work normally. So forgive me for that. Now, another thing to look for with the little stamps. Where are they? Um, these ones and I've lost them. I had some a second ago. The little round ones. I swear I had another little round one here somewhere. Let's just pull this one in here. So the little round ones, look at the stamps you've got and see what's really small. Like that's a little one, the book number. See whether that will fit. Yes, that'll probably fit. And if it doesn't, so what? Yeah, fits lovely. It's literally, this is one of those things you can do while you're watching a movie, while you're watching your friends on YouTube. Well, you're watching me on YouTube. You don't have to be looking at the screen to see what's going on. So that's given me a few on there. Let's put a couple on here. And I'm putting them to one side because I don't know what else is going to be put on here later. So just building up those layers of interest. Now, where's the ones that have the leaves on? I'm losing things, right. Something like this. This is a prime example of where I would put a smaller stamp with the leaf one. We will flick through all of these at the end, guys. Um, do accept the fact, though, that I'm working pretty much full out, trying to give you, give you something to watch. Right. I've lost something. I wonder whether that would go on anything. Maybe this one. Did I have another one of those? Right, so this is the one that we had our flower backgrounds on. This is another one off that stamp set. Um, it doesn't have to be this stamp set. You could literally have um, a little butterfly stamp. I mean, I do have a little butterfly stamp, which I use for stuff like this. Just adding that little bit of grunge into stuff. This one look really nice on there. So you can see some of these are layers, some of these are finished. Right, I'm going to have stuff all over the place here. Right, um, Condemned wants to come out for some reason. Condemned will probably fit on those long strips that we'll be using. So let's pull a couple of those in. Condemned. I'm not sure condemned is a word I'd use that often in my journaling, but you never know. There may be a call for it in um, one of my art pieces. So 
actually condemned with ivy is probably quite a cute idea because you usually find that old buildings that are condemned have got ivy growing all over them. Mind screen, hopefully I'm in screen. There you go. Now these are the up and down ones, I probably wouldn't put it on there. But you get the idea guys, you're, you're seeing what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just grabbing stamps at this point. You can be using anything you choose to do on any of these. Let's see if there's anything, actually have I got, I thought I saw some butterflies on one of these. All right, here you go. This is a, a matched up set of other stamps. I, I tend to cannibalize kits and I pass on the ones I don't want to use and I only keep the ones I do want to use. So I'm just going to use this little tiny butterfly here and it's just a really cute one. I use it very often for stuff. Just popping that in the middle of there is just enough to maybe give me a little bit of a something in the background. And I don't mean the background of the stamp. I mean that if I then stuck this onto a layer, then it would make more sense within the bigger picture. Another technique I like to do too is with butterflies specifically, if you stamp between the labels, you end up with a wing on each side. Love doing that. It's one of my favorite things. Let's see, um, where were the flower ones? Right, these didn't have numbers on, but I don't mind putting a butterfly in there. The others had butterflies, this one didn't. So have fun with this, guys. It's, it's a really, it's a lovely little way to just play. And as, as you saw when I bought the stuff, it cost me a pound and I ended up with all of these labels and I've turned these are just regular cheapest chips um, shipping labels and um, postal labels that people obviously I mean when I, I used to work as um, a company director's PA at one point in my life and we used to have these come in by the bundle fold and did we use them they were thrown in a drawer at the end, end of every year when we had a bit of a stock taken a clear out, half of them will usually went in the bin anyway. Right, what do some of these say? Do I want some of these? Right, kindness matters, there you go. How about that, Gail? Kindness matters. Let's see if I can stamp that on some of these. Hopefully I've got some that are big enough. Well, would it fit on there? Not quite. Where have I lost them? I thought I had more strips. I do have more strips. So if I come in here, pop it on there. Oh, not enough ink. Getting better. I think this ink pad needs a refill. That's getting there now. So what I would do with this sort of thing, as you can see, is I would stamp three times on one of these strips and then at the end of the day cut the strip up into smaller smaller um, labels for myself. So that's the sort of thing I would do that. Um, I think I probably bored you enough really. This is probably about half an hour long so far. You've already got the idea. You're already knowing what I'm doing. I'm literally just playing at this point and I love the fact... Oh, let's put that... Let's get that bird out of there. Oh, I haven't used it either. Come on out, you come, Mr. Bird. Oh, it's going to be a clean up on this desk afterwards, I can tell you. Right, that word needs to go back to that set. Do that once I've finished filming. So, just a nice little stamp. This is probably going to sit perfectly in that bigger square. I'll find another one of those bigger squares. Let's use those two. So, right, stamping a load of ink. This is the first time I've used this stamp, so it probably needs a bit of a build up. But if I come in and I stamp there, that's lovely. 
and then I could probably come in with kindness matters which is the word we just had and stick it at the top of that I might actually do that while I've got yarn here right. Now, you're probably going to be a little more creative than I'm being in this half hour video, guys, OK? So I fully understand that. Let's come in with Kindness Matters because this seems to be the perfect place to put it. Have fun with these. Now, um, I have been asked in the past, can you paint on these labels? Um, yes, you can but just be a little bit wary of how wet you get stuff. Like, I'm not sure I would really use um, uh, water colour techniques on here, although I might use something like a water-soluble pencil or crayon, put it on, and then move the colour around with the damp brush. That's kind of where I'm going with all of this lot, guys. Um, they're not all finished, but this is what we produced. So see, just little tiny ones. As I said, I would cut these into threes. So then I've got them on different labels. Cute, that's really nice. I could put splatters on top. I could go in with um, markers or pens and tickle these up further. This one needs more, but I knew that as I did it. This one, again, a little bit of a label. Numbers, you can never go wrong with numbers. Just interesting stuff. I mean, I could take this label as is. And it's done. It's cute. It's an element on the corner of a tag. It gives you options because if you leave the spaces on here, then you can come in and put other stuff on them. See, even the little butterfly. Background stuff. So lots of different things to do with these guys. Just go through your stamps, see what you've got. This is probably my most use useful one for them. I use these all the time. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. I'm going to carry on and just stamp a whole load of these out um, and put them in my stash for future projects. So hopefully you like that. There were a couple of other items in that video that were requested that I do as well. Um, give me time. I've got another project on the go for tomorrow, but maybe in a few weeks time you'll see some of those projects come through. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye bye now.